hi guys what is up welcome to my channel so for today's video it is one of my most favorite videos of the year to watch i'm going to be doing my 2019 makeup favorites so this video has so much makeup get a snack if you're planning on sticking around and basically this video really stressed me out last night i picked out all of the products that i've been loving this year and it completely filled this whole table and i was like i cannot talk about 50 products so before i went to bed i picked out a few products put them back in my bins and then this morning i woke up and then i put some more products back in my storage so basically what i'm trying to say is this video really stressed me out this year was the most makeup i've ever tried in my entire life. I've bought the most amount of makeup that I've ever bought before. There were so many things that I loved. There are definitely products that I forgot about, but I don't even want to think about that. We're just going to go with what I have now. And just so you know, there are no palettes in this video because I'm going to be doing a full dedicated favorite palettes of 2019 video within the next few days because palettes are my babies. So they get their own video. So if you are interested in seeing my favorite makeup products for 2019, then just keep watching. Also something to note, I'm thinking about doing like a beauty favorites where I talk about skincare, makeup brushes, hair tools, things that aren't actual makeup products. Let me know if you would be interested in that. I just didn't want to add any more products to talk about in this video because it would be like an hour long. So I'm gonna section this off into face, eyes, lips. I will put the timestamps below if you're interested in a certain category, but let's get started with the face products. So first off is primer. There wasn't a primer that really stood out to me this year. I was pretty much using the same primers that I had used previously. I just like really moisturizing primers, but I really got into this. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. Now last year I did have number one fair, but this year I purchased number three light medium so i'm mainly talking about this i decided to purchase one that was closer to my skin tone so that i can put this all over my face i can put it anywhere where my foundation is i can mix it with my foundation this is one of the most universal products ever like you can do whatever you want with it this just adds a really pretty natural glow to the skin so i'll put this all over under my foundation for a glow or i will use the lighter shade on top of my foundation right on the high points of my face and it's so natural so if you are into very natural glowy skin this is the perfect product for you if you're looking just to highlight definitely go with a lighter color than your skin tone but if you're looking for a glow go with a color that is closer to your skin tone so many foundations came out this year when i had originally laid out my favorite foundations there were 10 i managed to narrow it down to four so the first one is the la mer the soft fluid Longwear foundation this is in the shade natural 12 this is my second favorite foundation ever. My first favorite is the Dior Air Flash. This is like the Dior Air Flash but in a liquid form. It gives a very similar finish to the skin that the Dior does. It just makes my skin look really soft and flawless. It's very natural. It doesn't look too makeup-y but it does add coverage and really perfect the skin. There's just something so special about the way that this finishes on my skin and it wears on my skin that looks like skin but perfect skin. So it's not a super light coverage foundation. It's definitely more medium coverage, but it just makes my skin look so flawless. This does have a hefty price tag, but I would definitely recommend like going to your local makeup counter that has La Mer and get a sample of this and you'll see what I'm talking about truly one of the best foundations ever. The next one is a more light coverage foundation. If you watched my videos throughout the past year, you know I've been really into light coverage foundations and tinted moisturizers just for my job. I'm not always wearing full coverage product. So I've been loving the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Natural Skin Perfector. This doesn't add much coverage, if any at all, but there's something about it that just perfects the skin and just makes it look better, makes me look prettier, it just makes my skin look better and more healthy. If you're looking for like something to throw on before work or if you have a long day, something that's just going to make you look better, definitely check this out. Mine is in the shade 3 and one Sand. I use this a ton every day for work. Like I said, there's not really much coverage to it. It just evens the complexion and it's a really amazing product. I've been using this a ton, it's amazing. I have a drugstore foundation here. This is the Catrice Liquid Coverage Foundation. Now this is a really great winter foundation. I do find it to be a little bit thick 
for in the summer but I actually consider this to be a good look foundation because I wore this to an interview and I got hired this really perfects the skin it is more of a full coverage foundation it's a very watery and liquidy consistency mine is in sand beige though I do wish I would have gotten a darker shade but this really perfects the skin it is mattifying you're not going to get much of a glow with it but this is what I wear when I want a lot of coverage and a lot of perfection on the face so this actually translates very well on camera and it's quite affordable not an everyday foundation for me however when you want your skin to look perfect this is it so I actually mixed this on my face with another foundation that I've been loving this year and that is the ABH luminous foundation a lot of people were eh, about this but my skin really agrees with this foundation I do have more of a dry skin type and this just works so fabulous for me i love the way it wears i love the coverage that it gives it gives a medium coverage which medium coverage is my favorite i have mine in 240n now this is way too dark for me right now but this summer i got very very tan and this was the perfect color for me at this point it's way too dark so I mix it with the Catrice foundation and these two work amazing together. Just by the way, my skin looks really fabulous. This added some dew back to my face that this did not have. I just feel like if you have really dry skin, this is a great foundation. I love the way it looks. I feel like it looks like skin. A lot of times with foundations, sometimes I feel like they can make me look powdery or like I'm wearing makeup. Honestly, with this, I don't feel like it. I love this foundation. It's definitely one of my favorite foundations that came out. I mean, there's so many more foundations that I could talk about. I love the Pat McGrath foundation that came out. I love a L'Oreal foundation. There was the Milk foundation stick was great. So many honorable mentions. Like I just want to do a whole video of honorable mentions of products that just didn't quite make it. This year I also found a very deep love for powder foundations and the powder foundation of the year is the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin. This is an R330. This is the most amazing powder foundation that I have ever used. It gives you a great amount of coverage. It perfects the skin. It still feels really light all day. To apply it, I've just been using the sponge and I think it works great. I've just had a lot of experience with Seaworth powder foundations and this one wears the best. It looks the best on the skin and it actually adds coverage to the skin. So if you are looking for a really lightweight product that adds coverage, I would definitely go for this. This is amazing. Let's talk concealer. There were a lot of amazing concealers that came up this year. I chose one drugstore and one high-end. So this is my all-time favorite concealer of the year. This is the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric Concealer. I have mine in the shade 4. This is the most lightweight emollient concealer. You put it underneath your eyes and it just spreads out with no effort at all. It looks really natural under the eyes. It still does cover and it wears very well. This is the perfect concealer. It's not too thick and I truly cannot get over how emollient this is without it having problems with wear time. I also love the Milani Conceal Imperfect long wear concealer. This is a bit more thick than the Giorgio Armani. Has a bit more coverage. However, these two are very similar to me. I just feel like they both are quite emollient. The way that they spread onto the skin is very similar. This one is a little bit more heavy duty, whereas this one I feel like is a bit more natural. But both of these are absolutely wonderful. I could not have grabbed for them enough this year. Definitely top two concealers of the year for me. So I actually did not pick out any setting powders because I didn't really set my makeup this year, believe it or not. So we're just gonna move on to bronzers. I really got into cream bronzers this year, so there are two that I was loving. So the first one is the Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer Stick in the shade Baked. This is amazing. It blends out so easily. It's the most perfect color for my skin tone. I am just so so in love with this cream bronzer and what I love about cream bronzer as opposed to powder bronzer is cream bronzer really looks like skin so if you're going for a truly natural look cream bronzer is the best it doesn't move your foundation this is just a great way to add dimension and warmth to your face without it looking like you bronzed your face up also loved the Huda Beauty Tantor 
and this is in the shade fair i feel like for fair it is quite dark but this is another amazing product extremely emollient to the skin blends out super nice i like that i can kind of just dip my sponge in here and put it all around my face i would say both of these blend quite easily i would say huda maybe just a touch better but these are both are like equal playing fields for me i think they're wonderful the two powder bronzers that i've been loving this year the first one is the fenty beauty bronzer bronzer in Shady Biz. Now this is a very warm bronzer so I definitely wear this when I want to add warmth to my face but I absolutely love the way this spreads on my skin. I'm surprised I haven't hit pan on this little thing because I use it all the time. I just think it's the perfect bronzer shade for me when I really want some warmth but not to look super orange. It's a really good color, a really good formula. I think these were quite popular this year and for good reason. This is just a great bronzer formula. And then something more affordable, a bronzer that I've been really loving are the Maybelline City Bronzers. So I have it in two colors. The first one is 200, which is a little bit deeper. When I really want definition and some depth in my face, that's the bronzer I used on my face today. This is a really good color, not too warm and not too cool, just kind of great right there in the middle. And it adds that color to the outer parts of my face. It is a touch too deep for me when I'm at my fairest. However, it is a really great formula and it's so affordable. They also have the shade 100 and this is what I use to sculpt my face or when I really want a light amount of color on the outskirts of my face. Really great color. I love both of the colors. I feel like this is such a good formula. Maybelline really killed it with this formula. So if you're looking for something affordable, you're going to love this. All right, so let's move on to blush. The cream blush formula that I've just been so in love with all year are the Nude Sticks Nudies All Over Face Colors. Again, just like with the cream bronzers, there is nothing more skin-like than a cream blush. And I love a good powder blush as well, and you will see that. But there really is something special about the way that cream blush just blends into the cheek. It just looks so natural. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, but this Nude Sticks formula is really fabulous, and they have wonderful colors to offer. I loved Naughty and Spice, which is a little bit more mauve -y. And then In the Nude, I think is going to be your guys' favorite. That is this color right here. These are both very natural, flushy colors on the cheek, and they apply so easily. What I'll do is I'll just kind of take my finger and rub it over the top so that the warmth of my hands will kind of melt it down, and then I'll pat it right on my cheek. Sometimes I'll use a sponge if I'm not feeling like getting my fingers dirty, but these do apply really lovely on the cheeks. They have their all over dewy color which I do like but personally I think it's a little bit too sticky it doesn't dry down as the day goes on so that is why I just prefer the regular all over face colors but they have the most gorgeous colors so if you are looking for a great cream blush I would start here these are a wonderful formula as far as powder blushes go I really was into the MAC blush in Melba this is just an everyday really easy color it's a matte formula pretty nondescript but it's just a really great color that i found myself reaching for all the time all year because this goes with every look it's such a neutral color uh, it's a very classic product from mac everybody's been talking about melba for years and i just picked it up this year and it's just a wonderful everyday neutral flushy blush so definitely recommend that if you're at the mac store pick up melba it's a good one and this one probably was my favorite blush all year the most versatile blush for me and this is from sigma and this is the blush in core de rosa i love a good rose blush that's the blush that i have on my cheeks right now the formula of this blends into the cheeks very easily and it's just a great color again more of a matte finish but i love it this one is more formulation wise i found myself reaching for the kylie cosmetic blushes a lot this year i really like the colors that her range has to offer i feel like they're very feminine girly colors that i really loved the formula isn't the best in the world but it definitely is a good reliable formula you know with blush i feel like as long as it blends and doesn't apply too much color at once it's a decent formula but i just love the colors in here like this is baddie on the block i love a good pink blush if you're looking for something more neutral kitten baby is 
a really good one. And because I love a good cotton candy pink blush, Pink Power was also one of my favorites this year. I would recommend picking these up when they're on sale. It's gotten to the point now where her makeup does go on sale for pretty good deals. So if you can catch these on a deal, I would recommend picking up a couple because her colors are so wonderful. If you like really feminine, light, pinky kind of blushes, you will really like her blushes. All right, let's move on to highlighters. I have three right here. So this first one is actually a surprise to me. This is the Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette. This is the number two glitz. So actually last year, the original palette of this was in my favorites, and then they came out with this this year, and now this is one of my favorites. This one I wasn't quite as in love with as the first one, and then I realized I was reaching for this so frequently that it has become one of my favorite highlighters this year. I particularly love the shade right here. I feel like it just really melts into the skin. It's not too obnoxious of a color and just looks really natural on the skin. I've been really into natural highlights this year. Be careful if you don't like too glittery of highlights. You may not be quite as in love with this palette as I am, but I just think this is a beautiful formula. You get such a pretty glow to the skin and it does have little spikes of glitter, which personally I like if you don't stay away from this, but I really have been loving this. It's stunning. This one is probably my all-time favorite highlighter. No, it's not. This is my second all-time favorite highlighter of this year. This is the Milk Makeup Flex Highlighter in Lit, and this is just one of the most amazing highlighter formulas that I've come across. It's super silky, smooth, super reflective, and I just think silk is the best way to describe this. This is the highlight that I'm wearing now. I have not come across a highlighter that blends better into the skin than this one. Again, like silk, it looks like you're getting a crazy glow from within. It's not a glow from within because it is so crazy reflective. I am so in love with this formula. If you look a little close, it can be a bit glittery, but honestly it does, I don't think it's bad at all. And just the way that this spreads on the skin, and sits on the skin is so incredible. Definitely recommend this highlighter. It is worth every penny. And then another highlighter that kind of gave me that glow from within look that I have desired all year is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Soft and Gentle. Again, another oldie from MAC, but it is so good. I had went to MAC earlier in the year and had gotten some old favorites from back in the day when MAC was really popular. And this is just the most soft and gentle highlighter. It gives you the perfect glow from within and I loved this all year. So now let's head into my face palettes. Now, like I said earlier, my eye palettes will be in another video, but I did want to talk about some face palettes that really stood out to me. So this first one is a blush palette, and this is the Jouer Bouquet D'Amour blush palette. So this came with six blushes, and I was head over heels with this palette all year. It's one of the easiest palettes to go to. It just has every color that you will need. The formula of these are stunning they blend super nice and these are the kind of colors that I love except for this one I'm not into super orangey warm blushes but these pink ones this was just one of my favorite palettes of the year I could not get enough of this along with the Natasha Denona bloom blush and glow I will admit I have not used this recently however during the springtime and the summertime I was all over this this has a really beautiful cream blush formula that's not as intimidating as it looks and then you have some other glowy products Products to pair with it. I felt like this gave such a glowy flushed cheek that was super stunning and trending for the spring and I could not get enough of this product. She also came out with a tan one which I liked but I didn't love as much as this one. I'm waiting for her to come out with more shades of this type of palette because incredible. Incredible quality, the most beautiful flush. This palette I didn't think I would love as much as I did and this is the Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm Face Palette. When I had originally reviewed this, I liked it quite a lot but I wasn't like, oh my god, this is the most amazing thing ever. But then I I just found myself reaching for it so frequently. I'm not in love with the bronzer, but it gets the job done. I really love the glow products in here. I feel like they look super smooth on the skin and they don't emphasize texture like they should. Like I said, in the spring and summertime, I was very into glowy cheeks. 
and not necessarily from highlighter but just like a glowy blush and this I just paired over a lot of different blushes and it was just the most beautiful finish on the skin I still reach for this a ton I think it is an absolutely stunning product so if you are looking into Charlotte Tilbury I 100% recommend this I love it so much I think this has room for improvement but just the way the products finish on the skin I just kept grabbing for it and the last product that I loved all year was the benefit cheek leaders mini bronze squad I also loved the full size but I picked up the small one for travel because it had everything that I needed but in particular the highlighter in cookie this was my all-time favorite highlighter this year and this is mostly what I want to talk about it is a very beaming highlighter and the second that I tried it out I knew that this formula was extremely special and they did end up making it an individual so I would recommend buying the cookie highlighter individually if you can but this is my favorite highlighter of the year. Super glowy, super pretty. It just looks stunning on the skin. I raved about this highlighter all year, so I had to put it in my favorites. So last two face products are my setting sprays. So the first one is the Pixie Glow Mist right here. This one I love because it's the first spray that I actually feel like does add a glow to my skin. What I don't like about it is the smell. I feel like it lingers in the room after I spray it. I've heard nobody else complain about the smell, but I don't like this smell. But the product is so good that I continue to use it. But if you're looking for a really nice glowy setting spray, this is fantastic. It's not going to help the longevity of your makeup, but it does make your skin look glowy. So if you have dry skin, recommend that. Likewise, with the Catrice Prime and Fine Dewy Glow Fixing Spray, this isn't quite as dewy and glowy glowy as the pixie however this does add a nice natural dew to the skin that I think you guys will really like so this one is more glowy but this one is more subtle but still adds a nice freshness to the face so I've been loving these two setting sprays so let's move on to the eyes the eye section has a lot less products just because I'm doing my favorite eyeshadow palettes of 2019 in a separate video because that's a whole thing I collect eyeshadow palettes so that deserves a whole dedicated video so all these are just other eye products so we're gonna start off with eyebrow my favorite eyebrow pencil of the entire year were the Issa brow defining pencils of course I couldn't find the color that's mine but they have an ebony color a brunette color and a blonde color and these are just wonderful I like these better than my ABH they're so thin they blend easily but not too easily so that you still have definition from the brow hairs that you draw on and they're just the perfect consistency they're so easy to apply they apply just the right amount of pigmentation I mean a brow pencil is a brow pencil but these are definitely my favorite brow pencils that I've ever used. So check out the Isam brow pencils. My favorite eyebrow gel has been the Sigma Tint and Tame brow gel. This is just the clear one. I feel like it really does set my eyebrow hairs down. The big thing for me is that they face the direction that they should. Like I like up here going up straight and the brows hairs down here kind of going out to the side. And this just does a really great job. I really like the spoolie on here. I feel like it really catches the hairs and I like that it's short. So I can really get precise directing my brow hairs. This is definitely the best clear brow gel that I've used this year, but I've also been liking the ColourPop Brow Boss Gel in the shade Light Brown. This is more every day for me. Definitely make sure you get the tinted one so that it doesn't leave a white cast on your eyebrows, but it doesn't make your eyebrow hair stay in place as well as the Sigma one does. But what I will say is that it does make your eyebrows a little bit more fluff. So if you're looking for volume in your eyebrows, then I would definitely go for this. Plus it's like $6, it's amazing. Eyeshadow primer that I've used all year is the MAC Painterly Paint Pot. Another MAC classic from that trip I made earlier this year. I have used and abused this guy. I really just like how it lays down like a foundation on my eyes. It just evens everything out over the eyelid and it's just very easy to use. I don't necessarily know that it makes my eyeshadow not crease or anything because my eyeshadow creases regardless but just that foundation it lays down I really like this for. I do have one quick eyeshadow product to share with you because these aren't necessarily palettes but these Kaja Bento Trios so good. Right now I am wearing glowing guava and guys you need to get these. So they have two different versions. One will include 
a matte transition, a matte defining color, and then a really super special glittery formula. So it gives you the look that you need without even having to think about it. This is Glowing Guava right now. It is stunning. The quality of these are unbelievable. Literally, the mattes, they blend like a dream. Like, effortless looks. If Kaja ever came out with eyeshadow palettes, I would definitely buy them because their formula is incredible. The mattes blend super easily, and these shimmer formulas, insane. Absolutely insane and glittery. And if you love the sh glittery formula, they have a bunch of them that are all just glitter formulas. This is Orange Blossom. At the time that I bought these, I was like, I don't need these. These look like just something that's going to sit in my makeup drawer. No, they're amazing. So I recommend all of them, but here's one that I think you guys will like. So I'm wearing Glowing Guava, Chocolate Dahlia is what a lot of you are going to like. This is for like a neutral, cool tone kind of mauve eye. Chocolate Dahlia, Toasted Caramel. This is a all glitter one, but it has all neutral glittery tones. So if you want a little pizzazz in your everyday makeup look, this one's fantastic. I don't know, just all of them. So amazing. This is rose water. So good. Can't say anything bad about these. These are so incredible. You need to get them. Moving on to eyeliner. My favorite liquid liner this year was the ABH liquid liner. I wouldn't say this is the easiest eyeliner to apply. I'm just not good at applying liquid liner to begin with and I just it is not the brush tip, it's a felt tip, which isn't quite as flexible, but I do like it because I do feel like I have better control with the amount of product on application. But it's just not my favorite, but it's a really great formula. It doesn't bleed, and it's a really pigmented matte black, which is the main reason why I love this. So if you are looking for a really good matte black liquid liner that's going to last, that doesn't transfer, this is a really good one. This I didn't talk about too much this year because I just kind of used it on the side. Nobody really saw, but... This is definitely my favorite liquid liner of the year. The best one, it doesn't get cracky. Like when you put on another layer, it doesn't get gross like a lot of liquid liners. Really great formula. And then the ColourPop Cream Gel Eyeliners were most definitely my favorite pencil liners of the year. Particularly, I like the brown ones. I've been really into brown pencil liners because I feel like it's not as harsh to define the eyes with. So I will put it in my waterline and all around just to add some natural definition into the eyes without it being like a black because I do have naturally smaller eyes so the brown is just a really good way to add that definition to make you look a little bit like you tried harder and it's still very natural so overboard is like a metallic brown and this one is very very subtle on the lower lash line because of that metallic finish but then when I do want something a little bit deeper we have Mr. Bing which is more of a matte so they have a lot of Fun different colors that I use all the time in my makeup looks when I want a crazy color in my waterline but I've really been in love with brown for every day and then mascara finally I have two mascaras that have carried me through the year I started using an eyelash serum and it really has helped my eyelashes grow so I really got into mascaras this year and not wearing falsies as often so the one that I've been loving of late is the essence lash princess this is the best five dollars you will spend what I love about this is how well it layers and builds. Your eyelashes don't get clumpy. They get longer and they get thicker. Like this is an all-in-one mascara for me. I think it's, it's probably the best mascara that I've ever used. I've talked about this in like two favorites of this past year and I've talked about it enough because it's the best $5 mascara ever. And then also, this is brand new. I haven't opened it yet. But another mascara, this was especially towards the beginning of the year, was the Pat McGrath Labs Fetish Eyes Mascara. Very similar to this mascara. I love how it builds. I think this one adds a little bit more volume and it can get a little clumpier quicker, but it's still an amazing mascara. I love building my eyelashes on this. It honestly has been a while since I've used it because I've just been using this. But this was definitely a favorite mascara of mine all year. Super good. Very different price points, but both of them are amazing mascaras. I'll need to open that Pat McGrath one soon. All right, final section, lips. I found myself using like 
the same two lip products this year so just get ready <laughs> lip liners were huge for me this year i was so in love with lip liners first of all formulation wise my favorite lip liners this year go to the ColourPop lip liners they're super affordable they have every color you need i bought a whole bundle of the entire lip collection they're just a really creamy formula my two favorite ones were 951 this is when I wanted a little bit more definition and then little one which is more just to define the lips a little bit and so that my lip color wouldn't bleed a little bit more natural but these lip liners used them non-stop color wise my favorite color this year was the Alamar lip liner in Dulce 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 it's just the perfect contouring lip color very similar to contour from Pat McGrath which I will talk about in a moment but this is what you wear just to define the lips really with a nude lipstick this and like a more neutral nude lipstick incredible this is also a really incredible formula very creamy very blendable and then the last lip liner that I love is the Pat McGrath lip liner in done undone this is a little bit more slip to it it's not as creamy but it has more slip this one really sets down very nicely and I like done undone because it's like my lip color but a little bit more enhanced and I would pair this with a lip gloss so that's kind of my go-to lip this year was done undone as a lip liner and then like a clear or pinky nudie gloss right on top which is the lip that I'm rocking right now and I will tell you in a second what I use but also another color that I love from this line is contour it's currently in my purse but that one's more brown based so that one's a little bit more defining on top of my done undone right now I'm wearing diva lip gloss from Kylie really like her formula it's very smooth on the lips it's a very juicy formula love the applicator and this is the perfect pinky nude so this with done undone such a pretty combo while we're on glosses I'll tell you the other glosses that I loved this year. I really fell in love with the Morphe formula. They're made in the USA, which I think is wonderful. And the formula is just very simple. They have really good colors and it's very affordable. So this was a gloss that I grabbed for often. I would throw it in my purse. It's only a few bucks. This shade in particular is boho it is such a pretty pinky nude. It looks fantastic over any nude. It has a great shine to it. A little bit more sticky but still nice this wasn't everybody's favorites last year so I picked it up so it then carried over to my favorites this year this is the bite beauty lip gloss in flat white it's a little bit more of a neutrally creamy kind of color this looks really great over any more neutral lip because it's just more of a creamy peach color and I love a good peachy nude this smells like coffee it's a delicious formula and then the last lip gloss formula that I was loving this year besides the Fenty but I'm not going to talk about that because I talked about that last year is the Pat McGrath lip gloss and in particular the shade dare to bear again I was really into peachy nudes pinky nudes and this is just the perfect gloss to go on top of that the Pat McGrath in particular is extra shiny as well I felt like every time I wore that Pat McGrath lip gloss it would have that extra little oomph in my photos so that's a big thing lipsticks so this lipstick I have loved and used all year this is the Marc Jacobs lipstick in sugar sugar first of all the packaging and this is like a very neutral nude it's a little bit more of a frost finish which I don't necessarily love but I love the color so much it doesn't lean really warm it doesn't lean really cool it's a neutral nude this with cork lip liner from Mac which is a brown with the bite beauty flat on top my favorite nude lip combo so that's that one right there really peachy another color that I loved all year was the Becca lipstick in the shade sugar again a little bit more pink than the Marc Jacobs another favorite nude of mine it's a cool tone pink nude lip I think this looks great on so many different skin tones and this formula from Becca is amazing Becca has an amazing lipstick formula really really creamy really comfortable on the lips very pigmented liked that a lot and then the last two are formulas and collections that I love I fell in love with the Charlotte Tilbury hot lips 2 collection I have a whole video swatching the entire collection so I definitely would recommend checking that out of late the ones that I've been using a lot in love with Olivia 
has become one of my favorite everyday colors just to brighten up my face, especially in the spring. This is gorgeous. And Angel Alessandra, a little bit more peachy, a little bit more nude on my lips. These two I really have been loving lately. I also really like Magic Star, the JK Magic, Magic Star or whatever that one is. That one is more of a light nude. It's in my purse right now, but formula in general is incredible. And then the last formula that I want to share with you are the Natasha Denona Eye need a nude lipsticks. That entire collection colors are phenomenal. The formula from the I Need a Nudes are quite emollient, so the lipsticks are very soft, so you need to be careful. One of my favorite formulas, and it has one of the best color stories for the collection, if you ask me. No matter what lip color I put on from that collection, it looks good with my makeup looks. So my favorite, I love Natasha. This is a nude nude. It goes with super dramatic looks. Has a little bit of peachiness to it, but it's literally the perfect nude nude. Claudia's a little bit more warm, a little bit more deep. Lyran, if you're looking for something more peachy, that's a great one. And then Michelle is that perfect like rosy brown kind of nude that is still really light. So these are my four favorite from the line. However, I love every single one. I felt like every single one from that line looked good on me and it's just so universal for so many different people. <sighs> Guess what? We finally finished. That was my favorite makeup products for 2019. I know it was a lot of products. Maybe I need to split this up into videos next year, but I wanted to be completely upfront with my favorite items. I love makeup so much. I feel like I can't leave any of them out and I know I didn't even get all of my favorites. I probably forgot some, but yeah, let me know down below what your favorite products were for this year. Hopefully your list isn't as long as mine because this is just ridiculous. Let me know if you would like to see a full dedicated video to other beauty products that I've been loving. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a great new year. I'm wishing you happiness and health into the new year. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys, have a good one.